Welcome back to CCNA3. We're going to talk about maybe one of the most fun modules to teach and to learn. I promise it's fun to learn too, hopefully. Um, if, if it's not, I would be concerned about, about you. Um, automation is a super exciting thing for a lot of students. I know it's super exciting for me being in the industry, being able to put my hands on these tools, being able to automate things and um, make my small mistakes very large scale very quickly um, with the use of automation. So we're going to talk about what automation is. We're going to talk about different data formats such as JSON, uh, YAML, and XML. JSON is probably my favorite. Um, APIs, we're going to talk about different ways the computers communicate with each other. Really, these are just kinds of languages. Um, REST um, and how REST is a framework for an API. Configuration management, so we're going to talk about tools like Puppet Chef, Ansible, and SaltStack. Awesome tools that are going to allow us to do stuff like backup our configurations, um, modify our configurations, and so forth. And of course, we're going to talk about Cisco's DNA Center, which is really what they want you to spend those big dollar signs on. Um, so very, very expensive, um, but it is some pretty cool stuff. So with that, we're going to get into what automation is. So automation is basically um, we as human beings are disappointed that we can't do the slave labor thing anymore. And um, it's just terrible. That these humans, they need to like eat and sleep and do other things. So we figured out that these, these machines, they can work 24 hours a day without breaks. And we can actually have more consistent results out of these robots. So you've seen in the manufacturing industry, um, there's been a massive shift where we have more and more automated manufacturing and less human interaction. As automation becomes cheaper, becomes uh, more easily obtainable. Machines are very consistent, right? They provide a uniform product. They usually do the same thing over and over and over again. If it breaks, it breaks every single one um, in the same way. So automation will allow us to collect vast amounts of data and we can quickly analyze and provide information that will help guide an event or process. So in some cases, you're going to have automated processes that are going to be kicked off by this data, or maybe you'll have an analyst look at this data and modify uh, manually or the automation process based on this data. So robots are also used in dangerous conditions such as mining, firefighting, and cleaning up industrial accidents, as well as if you're from Houston, that uh, really cool thing that does space stuff, you know, NASA, um, they also use a lot of robots in automation. And it was really interesting because um, not too long ago, there was actually a position open for a space automation engineer. And so they're um, given the task to make sure to have very, very robust automation that will um, that will keep running in space and not have to have any human interaction um, for a potentially very, very long period of time because they need this equipment in space to just work. Um, and it needs to just work all the time. And so there's some really cool automation I'm sure that they're doing. Um, but there's a lot of conditions that we may prefer to do automation and use robots instead of having humans physically there and risking um, their health or their lives. Under certain circumstances, we might have smart devices that can alter their behavior to reduce energy usage, make a medical diagnostic by diagnosis, and improve automobile driving safety with a plethora of other things. So you may use automation to, um, with, with the wonderful world of IoT and the wonderful world of, of home automation, we can automate things like uh, blinds. Uh, there's blinds behind the camera, if you can't tell. Um, we can automate things like lights. So I actually have um, all of my lights come on in the morning with my alarm. Um, that helps me wake up, saves me some time in the morning. I absolutely love it. I know my wife is not a huge fan of it, um, but we make compromises in ways that works for both of us. Um, but really, there's a lot of really cool things we can do if you're one of those people that really need their coffee in the morning. There are coffee makers that are automated. 
from anything really simple to just a timer um, or based on a clock to something that you can program on your phone with an app and talk to the internet. Um, these things are really, really cool. So we incorporate the smart technology to help govern behavior um, of devices, not humans. If you were wondering, <laughs> this can be as simple as a smart appliance lowering its power consumption or as complex as a self-driving car. So um, some of the stuff that Tesla and other companies are doing with self-driving vehicles is really, really exciting um, and also kind of scary, but exciting nonetheless. Um, so yeah, they can take actions based on outside piece of information or things that they're just programmed to do. But if they can have that, that outside piece of information, they're referred to as a smart device. So they need to have some kind of outside interaction that changes their behavior. Many devices today are considered smart. Um, we have stuff like smart networks, we have smart appliances, we have smart cars, we have smart watches. Um, I have a smart watch, if you can't tell. Uh, we have smart phones. <laughs> we have all kinds of things um, today that are really, really awesome. Um, if you're interested in IoT and home automation, there's a lot of content on YouTube about some people who absolutely automate every portion of their life to the most they possibly can. Um, I'm not that far. Um, there's a lot of things that I don't like to automate. There's a lot of things that uh, I don't believe there's a cost justification to automating it for myself. Um, it really just depends on your situation and, and what you value. So in order for the devices to quote unquote think, because they're not actually thinking, they need to be programmed using network automation tools. Um, not really, they need to be programmed. They need to be programmed of what to do based on a situation, right? If the temperature goes above this temperature, then shut down the machine. If it is 8.30 in the morning, make a cup of coffee. If it's 7.45, turn the lights on, because that's when we're supposed to turn the lights on. Whatever it is, there is usually, a, a very, it's a very simple idea. It's just, if this, then that. Um, and this is something that if you've taken any programming courses, you will be familiar with. <clears throat> so, for example, if A and B are true, these are Boolean values in this example, then do X. If A is true and B is false, then do Y. If A is false and B is true, then do Z. If A and B are false, then start over. So, we may have different things in A and B um, to do different things and of course X, Y, and Z are different things that we could do based on these factors A and B. So based on what A and B are, it's going to change whether we do X, Y, or Z. And in a basic idea, if you're familiar with an if-then structure, this is basically what that is. If this condition, do this. If that condition, do that. If X condition do Y, if Z condition do A, whatever it is. Um, very, very simple logic. And that's all we have um, about that in 14.1. Join me very soon. We will talk about 14.2, different data formats.